on this holiday weekend that just passed, there's no question to me that the biggest, hottest, most fascinating sports story out there was the saga of what was going on with the University of Tennessee and their potential choice to be their next head football coach. How this all went down on an NFL Sunday was just crazy. You go from reports of Greg Schiano is going to be the next coach to an instant, swift, unanimous, vociferous response and rebuke of pure anger and disgust and disappointment by fans, alumni, former players, media over this potential hire. Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano. I mean, wow. You saw the power of the internet and how you went from this is pretty close to a done deal to all of a sudden everybody's having second thoughts and they're trying to figure out how to get out from under this whole damn thing. And it's crazy to me. And I sit there and fundamentally and I say, Greg Schiano, what the hell was Tennessee thinking? Now first, let me address the Volunteers fans, whoever there might be. To me, I compare Tennessee as being like a Michigan of the SEC. You're in a big time conference. You've won a national championship in the 90s. But the fact is, you are an incredibly massively overrated program whose belief amongst its fan base in itself of its importance and significance is much greater than what the reality is. Overrated ass program, Tennessee is. No question. Just like Michigan's football program is massively overrated and always has been. So, that said, it's not nearly as appealing of a job opening as maybe everybody involved with Tennessee thinks it is. So maybe, just maybe, you're not going to get the creme de la creme of head coaches or potential coaches to choose from. It's not a surprise that a Florida would be able to woo somebody like a Dan Mullen away from Mississippi State and you're kind of left out in the cold because Florida has a much greater lineage and heritage and history, especially in modern times where it really matters most, than Tennessee does. And Florida's in the state of Florida, so you've got that hotbed of recruiting down there. When you look at it, Florida is a much more appealing job and a much better program than Tennessee is, and that's just a fact, Jack. So maybe a guy like a Greg Schiano is about as good as you can get. Your program is not nearly as good as you think it is. You can put down the peace pipe with the John Grudens and all this other stuff because frankly, why would somebody like him want to leave this cushy gig where he has to work very little to go into the pressure cooker of coaching in the state of Tennessee where there's not a lot going on and the people overvalue the program significantly? Who would want to go there? Somebody like Greg Schiano, perhaps desperate for a second chance. But it's crazy to me. Like, your Tennessee's athletic director, what's his name, John Curry? And you're the University of Tennessee. And you start your process to find a head coach to replace Butch Jones, who ultimately was a failure. And one of the first names you think of, maybe the first name you think of, and you say, that's my guy, is freaking Greg Schiano, whose most notable success came at Rutgers. And newsflash, Ray Rice ain't walking through that door anymore. Brian Leonard is not walking through that door anymore. Yes, he turned around Rutgers, but it took him a long, long time. And the success that he enjoyed there was not that great. So that way he eventually left them and went to the NFL where he was a complete flop and washout for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Players hated him, opposing teams hated him, coaches hated him, pretty much everybody hated him. Now, the past two seasons, he's been the defensive coordinator at Ohio State, an Ohio State team that, granted, as of this recording, is on the cusp of potentially winning the Big Ten Championship and maybe even with two losses getting into the national title game. But this is a team that's had two really bad losses, and that's the guy you want, where his defense has gotten shredded in two games that the team lost at a school like Ohio State. You want Greg Schiano? 
who thinks this is a good idea? Especially when you have other options out there. Like if you want to go, let's say, the fresh face, the new face, who's actually a familiar face, you want to go the assistant route, then wouldn't the offensive coordinator at USC, the quarterback that led you to your national championship in the 1998 season, T. Martin, wouldn't he make a lot of sense? Wouldn't he potentially appeal to the alumni, the fan base, former players, and such? It would seem like he would be a better option than a Greg Schiano. Or, if you want to go down the experience route, frick, you might as well give Lane Kiffin a call and see if he'll come back. I'd rather have Lane Kiffin than I would Greg Schiano. But if you want to go with guys that have turned around programs or made programs something, you want to play with the big boys, maybe you go after somebody like a Justin Fuente down at Virginia Tech. He did good things at Memphis. He's doing good things at Vatech. Maybe he could do the same thing for you. That's the level of coach that maybe you could potentially aspire to be. But a coach that has been successful at two different stops at Memphis where he got everybody to get conned into thinking that Paxton Lynch was worth a first-round draft choice. Think about that to where he's now went to Virginia Tech and maintained the success that Frank Beamer left. Seemed to be a better option than a Greg Schiano. Or a Dan Mullen. But maybe you weren't going to get Dan Mullen because honestly Florida was just a better gig and a more appealing gig and he had history tied to that program. But maybe you're looking for a guy that does have some experience and has turned programs around and made programs into programs that matter. Look at Mike Leach. You know, he made Texas Tech matter. He made Washington State matter. He's got some power of personality, and maybe you would question how his system would work in a place like the SEC as opposed to the Big 12 or the Pac-12. But the bottom line is, is Mike Leach has been a success at multiple head coaching destinations. I would think he would be a more appealing option than Greg Schiano. And if you want to go bigger, maybe you go somebody like a Gary Patterson from TCU TCU is now a big-time college football program. They really are. They're one of those second-run teams in terms of you have your national title contenders, and they're kind of like in the 1B to 2A kind of section. They're close. They're not quite there. But Gary Patterson did that at TCU. Imagine if he could do that at Tennessee, and he potentially could. I mean, I think of all of these names, and you're thinking Greg Schiano, And then I think about the most obvious freaking name to me a guy that is currently a head coach in your state a guy that is very young which could bring some youth and enthusiasm to your program and a guy that early on in his career has shown that he knows what the hell he's doing that's justin fuente's replacement at memphis and of course i'm talking about mike norville he's what 36 years old Look at what he's done at Memphis. I think he's 18-6 and six over his first two seasons. And that was a team that lost his starting quarterback and other talent. And he's maintained and done very well and done incredibly well this year. You've got a young guy with success, some established roots within your own state. At a Memphis, where even though Tennessee is overrated as hell, you could sit there and get him to come to Tennessee and he might be that guy. And you think Greg Schiano is the better choice? Now granted, you never know with any of this. I talk about Gary Patterson. Gary Patterson could come there and Tennessee could still be a 500 football program. Mike Leach, same thing. Dan Mullen, same thing. Lane Kiffin, same thing. T. Martin, same thing. They could be incredibly successful there too. Greg Schiano could come in and nothing could change and nothing could get better. Or the fit could be right and he could do better. He could do a lot better than Butch Jones. Which isn't really saying a whole lot, I suppose. So who knows? And that's the thing. As much as we talk about uncertainties, there's no such thing as a sure thing when it comes to finding a new head coach. Because honestly, Sometimes the guys you think don't work out will work out, they do work out. And the guys you think are guaranteed to work out, they end up flaming out and crapping out. And Greg Schiano is just as likely to do one as it is the other. And for me, where I really question Tennessee's leadership and decision making is not just that they were going after Greg Schiano to begin with, 
But once they made their decision, they showed so little confidence in it and so much fear to the reaction and the backlash to it that they have now backed off. That to me is what's even more troubling because ultimately you have to make a decision and consequences initially be damned. If you feel like it is the right decision, whether anybody agrees with it or not, you must make it. Because ultimately, if three years of Greg Schiano's got Tennessee playing in an SEC championship game, probably not likely, but you never know, then all those fans that pissed and moaned and bitch about it will have to shut the hell up. You will either be right or you will be wrong. Because how stupid will you look if you didn't go with the guy that you initially had designs on and you went with somebody else because of the fan reaction and then that move doesn't work out. Now you really look like an idiot. You didn't get your guy, whether that guy was really the guy or not is a different conversation, to hire some other guy who ultimately didn't work out and in a few years you're looking for a replacement anyways. It's just crazy. Like how this whole thing went down, how fans and alumni and such were able to dictate the hiring process for Tennessee, the fact that they would pursue Greg Schiano as their top candidate, everything about this just gives you an indication of how messed up the Tennessee Athletic Department is and how overrated this Tennessee Volunteers football program is. Just unbelievable. What a joke.